Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel and today's topic of discussion is engineering notation on the Texas Instruments TI-89 Titanium Edition Scientific Graphing Calculator, made in China. Trust me, if it was really from Texas, it'd be bigger and a lot more annoying. Our objective during this short lecture is to learn to enter and interpret engineering notation on the TI-89. This lecture operates under the presumption the user is marginally skilled at writing and reading numbers in proper engineering format, as illustrated in the engineering notation lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. As you're no doubt aware, engineering format makes unusually large or unusually small numbers easier to write, read, and most importantly, conceptualize. The most commonly used range of engineering prefixes features the base unit, necessitating no prefix. The next largest prefix is the kilo, abbreviated small k, equivalent to 10 to the third or 1,000. The next larger prefix is the mega, abbreviated capital M, equivalent to 10 to the 6 or a million. The next larger prefix is the giga, abbreviated capital G, equivalent to 10 to the 9th or 1 billion. Finally, the next larger prefix is the tera, abbreviated capital T, equivalent to 10 to the 12th or 1 trillion. These positive powers in steps of 3 are equivalent to leftward shifts of the decimal places from the base unit. For example, 13,500 volts could be more appropriately expressed as 13.5 kilovolts in proper engineering format. Returning to the base unit, one can also use engineering prefixes to represent unusually small numbers. The next smaller prefix is the milli, abbreviated small m, equivalent to 10 to the negative third or 0 .001. Next smaller prefix is the micro, abbreviated as a funny looking u with a long tail, equivalent to 10 to the negative six or 0 .000001. The next smaller prefix is the nano, abbreviated small n, equivalent to 10 to the negative ninth or 0 .000. 000 001. Finally, the next smaller prefix is the pico, abbreviated small p, equivalent to 10 to the negative 12th or 0 .000 000 000 001. These negative powers of 10 and steps of 3 are associated with rightward shifts to the decimal place from the base unit. For example, consider the ugly string of numbers 0 .000247 amps. This could be more appropriately expressed as 204.7 microamps in proper engineering format. This, by the way, should be a review of the aforementioned lecture. Today's task is to learn how scientific calculators, specifically the Texas Instruments TI-89 Titanium Edition Scientific Graphing Calculator, displays engineering format and how a user enters and interprets these values. This lecture is meant to be a follow-along exercise. As such, go get yourself a TI-89. Don't worry, I'll wait right here until you return. Since this might be your first exposure to the TI-89, let's do a quick walkthrough. The TI-89 is the metaphorical sword with which you will fight many battles the next couple months and it will help you immeasurably if you know how to slash, stab, and at the very least, differentiate between the blade and the grip before you rush into battle. This being said, the calculator is not a magic sword and it will not tell you what to do nor how to apply the concepts we've discussed. You're the one that makes the decisions and the calculator just does what you tell it to do. Never forget this fact. The moment you trust a machine is the moment you lose. Never trust these devious little devils and always treat as suspect their results until you've judiciously inspected them and determined if the results make sense. The simple act of fat fingering a wrong key in a rush will most likely yield meaningless results. Results should behave within the bounds of predicted by theory. Let's start with a brief orientation of the TI-89. Obviously, there's a display and a keypad. The row of buttons immediately below the display are function buttons one through five. These buttons take on different roles depending on the mode you're in. There are some arrow key navigators in the upper right, and the enter key is in the lower right. You notice each key has more than one number, letter, symbol, or function written on it. The symbol written on the key is the natural function of that keypad, meaning if I haven't pressed any modifiers, the seven key will output a seven. If however, I press a modifier key like the alpha key, the seven key will write the letter G as indicated in the upper right hand corner. If however, I press a light blue second key modifier, the seven key will write the squiggly worm symbol used for integrals, again as indicated next to the key in light blue. In summary, most keys have more than one option, the unmodified, the second, and the alpha option. I should also point out that the negation sign key at the bottom is different than the subtraction operation key. To negate a number, press the negative sign and the number of interests. We'll examine calculator operations beyond engineering format in later lectures. 
The single most important key on the TI-89 is the mode key. This accesses three basic setup screens accessible via the F1, F2, and F3 keys below the main screen. If someone tosses you a TI-89 brand new out of the box or your straight up dies in the middle of an exam, true story, you should be able to set it up in 30 seconds or less and be ready to rock and roll. This is equivalent of being able to field strip, repair, and reassemble a firearm in a combat situation. The TI-89 won't work well if it's in the wrong mode and you need to be able to get it in the right mode as quick as possible. The first screen is eight options which you can choose from. We're going to deal with four of them, principally display digits, angle, exponential format, that's kind of the topic of today's lecture, and complex format. Walk down to display digits using the down arrow and then press the right arrow key to access the menu. There should be a list going from one to Q. Walk down the list with a down arrow key. The option I'm going to choose is E, float. Not float one or float 12, straight up float. Option E, between D, fix 12, and F, float one. Press enter to save this option. Walk down to the angle entry using the down arrow key and press the right arrow key to access the menu. Walk down the list with the down arrow key. The option I'm going to choose is two degrees. Press enter to save this option. Walk down to exponential format using the down arrow key and press the right arrow key to access this menu. Walk down the list with a down arrow key. The option I'm going to choose is three, engineering. Press enter to save this option. This is the option we're going to spend some time discussing today. Finally, on the F1 page, walk down to complex format using the down arrow key and press the right arrow key to access the menu. Walk down the list with a down arrow key. The option I'm going to choose is three, polar. Press enter to save this option. What did we just do? Regarding the angle and complex format, don't worry about it. These are settings that we'll use in later lectures on introductory AC circuit analysis. The angle measurement sets up to measure distances around a circle in useful degrees as opposed to useless radians. The complex format sets up to display a vector in polar format with a magnitude and angular direction as opposed to rectangular format with vectors in both the real and imaginary axis. Display digits you'd think is kind of a matter of personal preference, but it isn't. I want you to put it in float because it allows you to make the decision which place you want to round a value to. If your instructor tells you to round something in the tenths place, round it to the tenths place. If you have available all the digits as the float option allows, you'll have accessible all the dirty details to the right of the decimal point and call or keep as desired. We'll examine rounding in later lectures. We'll return to discuss engineering format in a moment. Let's move on to the second page of the mode function by pressing F2. You can pretty much ignore everything on the F2 page with the exception of the last two options, exact versus approximate and base. Walk down to exact versus approximate using the down arrow key. Press the right arrow to open up the menu options. Use the down arrow key to walk to option three, approximate. Press enter to select this option. The base we're going to be using is decimal. All of humanity uses the decimal or base 10 system. 10 digits, 10 fingers. A coincidence? I think not. If you want to dork out and talk to your computer, you can switch it to binary or hexadecimal mode. We'll learn about binary, hexadecimal, and a related packaging of numbers used by people trapped in the 1980s, octal, and later lectures on digital electronics. What's the significance of exact versus approximate? I'll explain in greater detail in later lectures, but it has to do with how the calculator displays irrational numbers and repeated decimals. Think of the expression 1 divided by 3. The exact value of 1 divided by 3, believe it or not, is the fraction one third. It can't get more exact than that. However, fractions are extremely unbecoming in the engineering world, and we need to represent this answer as an approximated decimal form. The approximation of one third in decimal form is 0.333333 and so on into infinity. This is where the display digits float comes in handy. Round to the nearest tenths place, one third is approximately 0.3. Round to the nearest hundreds place, one third is approximately 0.33, and so on. All right, that's all we really need to do in mode. Let's get out of here by pressing enter to save our choices. In summary, display digits float, angle, degree, exponential format engineering. This is the topic we're going to be discussing today. Complex format polar. On the second page, exact versus approximate must be an approximate, and your base must be in decimal. Let's now return to our intended topic, engineering format as displayed on the TI-89. We've got two tasks. One, 
learn to read a number displayed in engineering format in the TI-89, and two, learn to enter a number using engineer prefixes into the TI-89. Here's the key to interpreting numbers as displayed on the TI-89 in exponential format engineering. It's got three parts. The TI-89 displays a coefficient next to a capital E next to a power of 10. This is the calculator's way of saying take the coefficient and multiply it by 10 raised to that power. If the calculator is displaying 2E3, it means take the coefficient of 2 and multiply by 10 raised to the third power, where 10 to the third power is 1,000. 2 times 1,000 is 2,000. If this number represented a quantity of power in its watts, this would be 2,000 watts. Or using engineering prefixes, 2 kilowatts. Here are three totally wrong interpretations of engineering format. First, 2E3 does not mean 2 raised to the third power. 2E3 means 2 times 10 to the third, or 2 times 1,000, or 2,000 watts, or using engineering prefixes, 2 kilowatts. Second, 2E3 does not mean 2 times E, notice the lowercase e, raised to the third power. Lowercase e is an important mathematical constant serving as the basis of the natural logarithm. Numbers like e and its irrational BFF, pi, are transcendental and play an important recurring roles in mathematics. As cool as this is, this is not what engineering format means. 2e3 means 2 times 10 to the third, or 2 times 1,000, or 2,000 watts, or using engineering prefixes, 2 kilowatts. Finally, 2e3 means absolutely nothing to the outside world. Only in TI-89 calculator land does this mean anything. If 2e3 represented a quantity of power in units of watts and you were to enter 2e3 on an exam, you'd get the answer to that question wrong. 2e3 means nothing. It's just a method your calculator uses to display numbers in engineering format. Again, 2e3 means 2 times 10 to the third or 2 times 1,000 or 2,000 watts or using engineering prefixes, 2 kilowatts. All three of these interpretations are wrong. There is one and only one proper interpretation. The TI-89 tells us the coefficient, in this case two, tells us we're in engineering format with a capital E and to what power of 10 we're multiplying the coefficient by. In this case, 10 to the third or 1,000. We know the engineering prefix associated with 10 to the third or 1,000 is a kilo or a small k. So if this is a measure of power and it's watts, the calculator is saying two kilowatts. Can you dig? Here's a couple more examples. Let's say the calculator is displaying 3.5 E negative 3. Let's pretend this is units of amps. The TI-89 tells us the coefficient, in this case 3.5, tells us we're in engineering format with a capital E and tells what power of 10 we're multiplying the coefficient by. In this case, 10 to the negative 3 or 0.001. We know the engineering prefix associated with 10 to the negative third or 0.001 is a milli or small m. So if this is a measure of current in units of amps, the calculator is saying 3.5 milliamps, where 3.5 milliamps is equivalent to 0 0.0035 amps in the base unit. Let's say the calculator is now displaying 1.72 E6. Let's pretend this is a unit of ohms. TI-89 tells us the coefficient, in this case 1.72, tells us we're in engineering format with a capital E and what power of 10 we're multiplying the coefficient by in this case 10 to the 6 or a million. We know the engineering prefix associated with 10 to the 6 or a million is a mega or capital M, so if this was a measure of resistance unit of ohms, the calculator is saying 1.72 mega ohms or 1.72 mega ohms is equivalent to 1,720,000 ohms in the base unit. Got it? 